All right, welcome to a, another video from Agricultural Insights. My name is Chris Delzer. Uh, today, I want to talk to you guys about a standalone fence charging option. Okay, so this is for those of you that have no, uh, you know, electrical outlet that you can plug into, and you're going to need something out in the field that is completely standalone. Now, you know, this may or may not be for you. Um, when I was working with Greg Judy, he had excellent fences and we always had power by just and going and uh, hanging this reel here on a piece of high tensile fence, okay, that was electrified. Uh, but that might not be the case for you. You might just be getting started out. So I'm going to explain to you the system I developed um, kind of through various sources on the internet and one that I think works really well and can work for you. So the first thing that you will need is a fence energizer or sometimes called a charger okay um, this is a stay fix as the brand name here and this is an x2 which means this is two joules and I think this says it can power up to like 20 or 30 miles of fence or something like that um, and my recommendation for you with chargers is to buy the most expensive charger that fits within your budget so I mean don't go out and you know max out your credit card or or spend money on it if you're not going to be able to eat or something like that but you know you have to make the appropriate decision for the charger that you want that you want to get just to put this in perspective this is a two joule charger and Stafix now makes a 64 joule charger or something like that or 62 or something uh, they also make a 32, okay? So that's a very, very powerful charger. That would be to power miles and miles of, of high tensile fence. In a more mobile uh, version, this is a more mobile setup. One of these smaller chargers would probably be just fine, um, you know, but if you can go for it, get the six joule charger. So here's the charger. Um, the charger settings are right here. Okay, you can see the little lights come on. So, indeed, this system that I'm showing you does work. Uh, this isn't really a charger review, but they have different settings. Bunny rabbit, which is fast. Moon, sun, turtle. Okay, the turtle's slow. This would be rapid during the day. The moon is rapid during the nighttime. And this thing, this little battery question mark symbol, lets you know how much battery is left. Okay, so that's the charger. The next thing that I, you, you're going to need a power source. So here's my power source. I've just modified uh, the cable that goes directly to the charger. Okay, I've modified this with two alligator clips, a red and a black. Um, you know, I've just spliced these. And uh, you hook one side up to the positive, one side up to the negative. And this is a deep cycle marine grade battery that's very important. Um, deep cycle marine grade battery. This is just going to have more charge and last longer. That's all I can really tell you about it. Okay. These are expensive and heavy. Okay. So plan on spending between one and $200 just for one of these batteries. Now the next option, the next step is a solar panel out in the field. This solar panel will keep this battery charged. Okay. So that's really nice. You got to make sure this is always in the sun and that it's always hooked up to this. And if you're going to have a portable system, I forgot to mention, um, try and keep this out of the water. The solar panel can kind of take some water. What I do is I just kind of angle it up. Okay. So I just angle it up so water can then run from the top down to the bottom. Okay. But try and keep this uh, somewhat waterproof. And then you can see this little case I have around this battery here. This actually also has a top that I am not showing you to keep it waterproof. And I just strap a bungee cord around the center of it. And, you know, I lay these uh, little alligator clips flat like that. Okay. So that's how that works. So you've got your charger, your battery, and your solar panel. The next step is the charge controller. Now this is probably the most important piece of this entire puzzle. Obviously you're not going to have power without the battery and you're not going to have um, power without your charger either, but this charge controller regulates the solar panel 
okay? It's like a medium between the solar panel and the battery. So the solar panel doesn't overcharge this battery. And I would say this thing was between 10 and $20. I think it's around $12. I got it off Amazon, okay? Um, so, you know, there's indications that when the sun is on or when the sun is out, the battery is being charged, what the load is, and the temperature sensor, I've never seen this go off, but that's for, I'm, a, I'm guessing, if things get too hot. Okay? So basically, right here, you have a little solar panel, positive and negative. Right here, you have a little battery, positive and negative. And then over here, you have the light bulb, positive and negative. Okay? That would be like what you're trying to power, essentially. So this isn't actually hooked up exactly right however I do have the solar panel um, cords coming in down here that you can see I'm trying to get a better view of this there we go so I got the solar panels uh, the solar panel hooked up here and then I also have the power source on the battery right here with these two alligator clips so what I would do is actually take these two alligator clips over here and hook them up over here Okay, and then you can get another set of alligator clips just like this, and they would come out of the little, where the little light bulb is here, the positive side and the negative side, and this would actually go right over here to the charger. Okay, so that's where this would go. It would go in to power the charger. And the charger is powered by this little plug back here. So again, um, all I would need to do is to modify these, okay, little alligator clips, um, and take each side over here and plug them into the charge controller here. Um, and I should get this set, set up and do a more in-depth video for you guys, uh, and I will try and do that. But now back to the charger, okay, the red alligator clip right here. As indicated on the charger with the little electric lightning bolt, that's where you have your power. So, you know, you would take this over to um, your reel over here, and you can clip this right to the poly wire, okay, or your poly braid. Um, there's a huge difference between poly wire and braid, and I did a video on that, so check out my channel for the differences between the two. They're huge. And then going back to the charger, this little symbol right here is for a ground, okay? And you do need to ground this even when you're out in the field. And uh, the ground is indicated with a green alligator clip, okay? Um, grounding depends on where you are. Um, but, you know, for, for this one, for this two jewel charger, I think I probably just used one ground rod and it was fine. And so I just drove that, it was like a six or eight foot galvanized rod. I drove most of it into the ground, and then I just, you know, grounded it off this. Uh, you can get creative. I've seen people by irrigation ditches and stuff grounding off, just you know, metal instruments around the irrigation ditches or, you know, a post, a T-post or something like that. So uh, the options are up to you. But um, this is a uh, mobile fence charging setup that I have. And it's worked very well for me. So I hope you guys got something out of this video. And um, I look forward to talking to you guys in the future. See you soon.